The spacecraft was a long way from home, beyond the orbit of the outermost planet and high above the ecliptic plane. The ship was speeding away from the sun at 40,000 miles an hour, but in early February of 1990, it was overtaken by an urgent message from Earth. Obediently, it turned its cameras back toward the now distant planets, slewing its scan platform from one spot in the sky to another. It snapped 60 pictures and stored them in digital form on its tape recorder. Then slowly, in March, April, and May, it radioed the data back to Earth. The spacecraft was 3.7 billion miles away from Earth, so far away that it took each pixel five and a half hours, traveling at the speed of light, to reach us. The two Voyager robots have explored four planets and nearly 60 moons. They are triumphs of human engineering and one of the glories of the American space program. They will be in the history books when much else about our time is forgotten. The Voyagers were guaranteed to work only until the Saturn encounter. I thought it might be a good idea, just after Saturn, to have them take one last glance homeward. From Saturn, I knew, the Earth would appear too small for Voyager to make out any detail. Our planet would be just a point of light, a lonely pixel. Hardly distinguishable from the many other points of light Voyager would see, nearby planets, far-off suns. But precisely because of the obscurity of our world thus revealed, such a picture might be worth having. Mariners had painstakingly mapped the coastlines of the continents. Geographers had translated these findings into charts and globes. Photographs of tiny patches of the Earth had been obtained first by balloons and aircraft, then by rockets in brief ballistic flight, and at last by orbiting spacecraft, giving a perspective like the one you achieve by positioning your eyeball about an inch above a large globe. While almost everyone is taught that the Earth is a sphere, with all of us somehow glued to it by gravity, the reality of our circumstance did not really begin to sink in until the famous frame-filling Apollo photograph of the whole Earth, the one taken by the Apollo 17 astronauts on the last journey of humans to the moon. It has become a kind of icon of our age. You can make out the blue of the ocean, the yellow-red of the Sahara and the Arabian desert, the brown-green of forest and grassland. And yet, there is no sign of humans in this picture. Not our reworking of the Earth's surface, not our machines, not ourselves. We are too small, and our statecraft is too feeble to be seen by a spacecraft between the Earth and the Moon. From this vantage point, our obsession with nationalism is nowhere in evidence. The Apollo pictures of the whole Earth convey to multitudes something well known to astronomers on the scale of worlds to say nothing of stars or galaxies. Humans are inconsequential, a thin film of life on an obscure and solitary lump of rock and metal. It seemed to me that another picture of the Earth, this one taken from a hundred thousand times farther away, might help in the continuing process of revealing to ourselves our true circumstance and condition. It had been well understood by the scientists and philosophers of classical antiquity that the Earth was a mere point in a vast, encompassing cosmos. But no one had ever seen it as such. Here was our first chance, and perhaps also our last, for decades to come. At last, the time came. A mosaic of squares lay down on top of the planets, and a background smattering of more distant stars. We were able to photograph not only the Earth, but also five other of the Sun's nine known planets. This is how the planets would look to an alien spaceship approaching the solar system after a long interstellar voyage. From this distance, the planets seem only points of light, smeared or unsmeared, 
even through the high-resolution telescope aboard Voyager. They are like the planets seen with the naked eye from the surface of the Earth, luminous dots, brighter than most of the stars. You cannot tell merely by looking at one of these dots what it's like, what's on it, what its past has been, and whether in this particular epoch anyone lives there. Because of the reflection of sunlight off the spacecraft, the Earth seems to be sitting in a beam of light, as if there were some special significance to this small world. But it's just an accident of geometry and optics. The sun emits its radiation equitably in all directions. Had the picture been taken a little earlier or a little later, there would have been no sunbeam highlighting the Earth. And why that cerulean color? We can explain the wan blueness of this little world because we know it well. Whether an alien scientist newly arrived at the outskirts of our solar system could reliably deduce oceans and clouds in a thickish atmosphere is less certain. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner, how frequent their misunderstandings, how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known.